In today's video, we're going to be creating an event registration form inside of Framer using Framer Forms, where users can RSVP for an event on your website or on a client's website with their name, email, number of guests, and dietary requirements. Then, once they click on Submit, they are redirected to a thank you page and get an automatic reply to their email via webhooks. I'm Lucas from Insert Frame. Let's go. All right, let's say that you have a client that owns a different co-working locations and they are, you know, going to be doing a grand opening for one in Dallas, Texas at the end of the summer, right? August 20th, 2025. And you kind of want to, you know, add in this form in this section that captures, you know, your users' names, emails, uh, dietary requirements because there's going to be food and so on and so forth. So inside of this section, we want to add some type of form, maybe underneath this text. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open the plugins and search for Framer Forms. In this case, it's right here. Click on that. And what I want to do is I just want to click on New Form. And let's do a single page form. And once you click on that, it's basically going to add the form here in your canvas. We just want to move that over here and drop that inside of this layer right here, put that underneath the text and button. We put that underneath this text layer right here, and we can set this to a fill width, just like that. And then once you're done styling your section, we can go ahead and style our form. So in this case, I do want to have the name, I do want to have the email. So what we can do is we can just select these two ones and set, put them inside of a stack that is aligned horizontally like this. So we have a little bit more space. So we have the name, we have the email, and then we don't really need the location one. We can delete this one. And what we can do is we can open Framer Forms again and look for different types of form inputs that we can add here. So I do wanna add like number of guests and I wanna add something like, you know, their dietary requirements. Like if they're vegetarian, um, if they're in a keto diet, let's see what we can do. So for the number of guests, we have two options. We can either use a drop down maybe or a text. In the text, you know, it's a free for all. They can write 500, you know, guests or in the drop down. We can give them a limit. We can do like, you know, one to two, two to five or five to ten. And maybe that might be something that that's reasonable here. So let's just do that. Let's drag in this drop down and make sure that it's on the same level as all of these, so that's perfect. Let's set this drop down to a fill width like this. And for the dietary requirements, I'm thinking of adding some buttons. So maybe something like either an image select or buttons. We can we can try both just to kind of see. So just to preview how it looks like. So we have the buttons looking like this and we have the images. Maybe the images would be too much. We can just use the buttons for now. Let's select this buttons stack and set it to fill content like this. And we can do the same thing with the name and the email. We can try to put them in a stack and set this stack like this horizontally. So maybe that might not be the best option. We, we would have to check, but it's a, it's a possibility. In this case, I'm just gonna, you know, undo this and put them under, under each other like this. Now, before we start, you know, adjusting the text inside of each input and actually, you know, designing this to be a little bit more visible because I can see that it's kind of dark. Let's set up the different, you know, let's make sure that everything is set up correctly for these labels, for example. So we want to give each one of these a specific uh, name, right? So this is going to be the name. That's great. This is going to be the email for the drop down. We don't want it to be called location. We want it to be called guests or number of guests and the buttons we can call this one dietary requirements and then here for example this check we have newsletter and we can change the text to actually be something you know regarding a newsletter so something like do you want to receive weekly updates on our location so basically if they click on yes um, we know that it's for the newsletter and we also have these you know button input settings so for example when you click on the button you can see that we can you know allow multi-select or disallow it in this case i want to disallow it because i just want the user to just select one and if we go to the drop down we can see we can also edit the different options so we're going to go ahead and start 
from the very top and kind of every uh, edit the information or the input information of everything. When editing this drop down, and you click on this and then you select, you see the different options, right? We have option A with this specific value, right? This is what the user is going to be seeing. This is what you're going to be seeing in the, in the back end when you receive the submission. So just keep that in mind. So for example, here, we're going to see one to two guests. And you could leave it option A if you know that option A means one to two. Here we can do two to five guests. And here we can do five to 10 guests. Once you want to edit the context of these buttons, just select the buttons and go up here to options. And over here, you have practically the same thing as this drop down where you have a value and you have the option titles. As you can see, since we added a new, another one, we get you know another one added over here in the, in the visual front end. And what we can do here is we can just edit the layout. Right now, the layout is three columns and we can just set it to two columns and we get this grid view like this. Now, the next thing that I see is that these titles, you know, we can edit them by just double clicking, right? That's the power of Framer that you can just visually edit these things like that. Now, what we can do here is we can, once you're done styling this form, you can send it to, you know, directly to your email or via webhook, right? Or via Google Sheets. In this case, we're just gonna do Google Sheets just so that we can get like some results from um, this specific form submission. And once you connect your Google Sheet account, you can just create a form like say event submissions, click on create. And what Framer does is it automatically creates a, you know, Google Sheet inside of your account called event submissions that you can just open up. And every time someone submits something, it's going to be placed there. We also have the option to redirect over here. So we can click on redirect and we can link it to a specific page. In this case, I'm gonna link it to thank you. And then if you look at the thank you page, it's gonna look like this. Thanks for signing up. We'll be happy to see you there. Don't forget to check your email for more details. So right now, the user won't get any you know, email directly after submitting the, this form. We have to set that up as well. Right now, only you know the event organizer will be getting the form submissions inside of this Google Sheet that Framer created. So in this case, we can use something like Zapier to create this automation, right? This automatic response automation. So let's just go up here to create and let's create a zap. And as you can see, we have this, you know, trigger and action, right? So the trigger should be the form that it collects the data from the form. And then the action should be, you know, eventually sending an email to that specific email that was submitted in the form, right? So let's click on trigger. And on trigger, we want to just click on web hooks and we want to click on catch hook, right? And then inside of tests, what we can do is we can just copy this web hook URL and we can go back into Framer and we want to paste it over here. We want to click on web hook and we want to paste in this URL. And then what we can do is we can just press play and add some random information, click on submit. We get this redirect, which is great. And then inside of Zapier, the test worked. We got this request, vegan, John, news that are on, number of guests, option A, and perfect. So let's continue with selected record. And we get to step two, which step two should be something like, let's say, Gmail. And we can select send email, right? And here you want to basically connect your company or your client's email then we click on continue and here two, let's just click on this plus sign and we want to choose this email. We can CC someone if we wanted to, we can choose our own email or our, you know, client's email for the from value from name. We can just put our company name and for the subject test, we can, uh, text, we can do thanks for the registration and the body type plain is fine. We can also choose HTML, which, it, you know, uh, allows you to add more customization with code, but let's just do plain. And then body, what we can do is we can just start typing something. Perfect. That's, that's all that we want for now. We can add a signature, add labels, add attachments. We don't really want that for now, just for testing. Click on continue. And then we can test the step. Obviously, I don't have access to this email, but let's just test it. 
and it says that it's been sent, right? So let's just go ahead and start from scratch in the form and, you know, use an email that I actually use. All right, and then what we can do here is, again, test this, find new records. We got record B, continue with selected record, and then we can retest the step. And then as you can see, we get uh, this, you know, this is the company co-work with my other email. Thanks for the registration. Hi, Lucas, thanks for registering. We know that you are a kosher, right? So perfect, that's, that's kind of like the first step. Obviously you have much more flexibility in terms of customization and all that, but you know, this is just a great example of how you can use automation to do things like this. And once you're done publishing that automation, that zap inside of Zapier, you know, you can just use this form it, the submissions can be sent directly into a Google Sheet and can also have this webhook where it can send that automatic email to the person that actually submitted this form. And we have this redirect to the thank you page. And again, everything is you know flexible in terms of design because at the end of the day, we are using Framer and Framer is literally the best web design tool out there. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you wanna check out Framer Forms, please check out the link in the description. We also have the template in, in the link in the description if you wanna check that out as well. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.